It's KMJ at KMJNow.com or wherever you stream. Welcome to the Mark Capitan Show. This is attorney Mark Capitan, your host. Today's show is brought to you by the Capitan Brothers Law Firm. We've been serving the Central Valley since 1995. If you or anybody you know has been injured in an auto accident, a truck accident, or a motorcycle accident, give us a call at 559-498-8000. Or if you've been arrested or cited for a criminal offense, call us at 559-498-8000. Capitan Brothers, we are the Valley's Law Firm. Hey, folks, in uh, 1986, I was a marine biology major at uh, Moss Landing Marine Laboratories over there in uh, Monterey. I remember calling my brother, Peter, who was attending law school at the McGeorge School of Law. We were asking each other how classes were going, and Peter, who eventually became number two in his uh, graduating class, was telling me how difficult his studies were. I remember I said, Peter, listen, give me a break. Uh, I'm studying marine biology, science. That's really hard stuff. And how hard could law be? And he sort of laughed and he said, you have no idea. Well, about three years later, I'm at McGeorge School of Law myself. And I remember sitting at my desk one night after about six hours worth of classes and about 14 hours worth of studying. And I realized Peter was right. Law school was 10 times harder than anything I ever did in college. But I was about 23 at the time. Five years of college, I felt I was old enough and mature enough to tackle such a challenge, which makes the accomplishments of my next guest so very, very unbelievable. He is a high school graduate, a college graduate, a law school graduate, done at the same time high school and college, and last November successfully passed the California bar exam and is currently a deputy district attorney in Tulare County. And all of this he has accomplished at the ripe old age of 17. He is the youngest person in California history to ever pass the bar. So I would like to welcome to the Mark Capitan Show from the Tulare County District Attorney's Office, Peter Park, who is being accompanied by his much, much older <laughs> boss and member of the Tulare County District Attorney's Office, the head honcho himself, District Attorney Tim Ward. Welcome, Peter, and welcome, Tim. It's hey, great Tim. to be here. Thanks for having us. Hey, I listen, this is an accomplishment like I can't imagine. You are, are you, let me ask you, Peter, are you 18 yet? I'm 18 years old. Okay. It's, when it's when did that happen? It's a requirement to be 18 to practice law. Oh, okay. When did you turn 18? I turned 18 in late November. Okay. And and Tim hired you right after that? Uh, I was hired in August as a law clerk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I was working as a law clerk, I received my bar results in, in early November. So there was a period of time when I passed the bar, except I couldn't practice right. because I wasn't 18 yet. So I waited about three weeks and then I was sworn in by Tim, Mr. Tim Ward here. Yeah. Oh, did you t- swear him yeah. in? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It was interesting because we, you know, we, we hired Peter and we were, you know, obviously watching with uh, anticipation, confident what was going to happen. And then he passed and all of us were like, okay, let's, let's start. And suddenly we can't start. We have <laughs> to not- wait because it, it takes, uh, it takes a little while to get the documentation. From yeah. The but also he was it. just not 18 yet. Exactly. I didn't even yeah. think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me ask yeah. you. Okay. But Tim. How did you learn about Peter? What what was your, dis- I mean, was this, you know, I remember going into the NRA at six years old and my dad said uh, he was the one of the uh, directors of the NRA at the time uh, in Virginia. And he says, we are picking some young kids to figure out how, you know, if they could do this kind of stuff, if they could handle that kind of responsibility. So was this an, I hate to put it, Peter, but is this a test, an experiment? I mean, or did you see something no, in this not kid? At all. You know, and I'll let, I'll let Peter talk about what led him to Tulare County, but he came across um, our radar, applied for uh, a position as an, as an intern in our office. And as you know, we have a, uh, you know, we have a panel of, um, um, you know, people that do the first round of interviews. And, yeah. and I remember um, the, the absolute consistent um, takeaway was we need to hire this guy. And not because it was an experiment, not because he was unique, simply because he was 
uh, very smart, uh, engaging, mm-hmm. and there was a level of just dedication and commitment that kind of blew everybody away. So that's how it came on our right. radar. And then how long did you actually intern with us before you took the bar? I started in August, or before the bar? Yeah, before you took the bar, yeah. I. Did not. Or you came in after the bar? I came in after. I took the bar and I came right up. Okay, so so your internship and your love of law had nothing to do with Tim here, basically. (laughs) I mean, what makes you start? You started law school and college at what age? I started, so I skipped college and I just went straight into law school uh, at the age of 13. Okay, but so you, okay, you took the proficiency exam. I thought you were taking classes. You literally took a proficiency exam because you had to have some sort of college proficiency to get into law school, right? Yes. Um, so there are these things called CLEP tests. Yeah. And they're provided by the college board. Uh, my dad found out about this um, when he was looking at, so he, he saw an article online uh, of this 21 year old who became an attorney. And he thought I could do it. <laughs> so uh, he put you up to it? Yeah. So he <laughs> looked up ways to get into law school. And one of the laws that California's ha- California has is you could just take club tests and you, you, you're you eligible. To- yeah, you're challenging, basically. Yes. Yeah. So I so, took those club tests and I applied to law school at 13. And, and did you have to get a degree in a college uh, curriculum? No, that, that was not a requirement to right. go to law school. That still isn't a requirement. So you've missed your whole college experience as far as that's concerned? Um, not the traditional college experience, but right. I do have a bachelor's degree. In what? In business IT management. <laughs> God. And you did that at the same time that you were going to law school? Yes, because all of it was online, so I, I was able to find the time to do it. Uh, uh, during COVID, I guess, helped a lot with yes. that, right? Yeah. Uh, how many hours a day are you studying when you're doing this? So the minimum requirement is... Um, we, I did the math and it came out to about two and a half hours a, a day for four years. Um, that's wait, wait a minute, of law school study? Yes. Well then, geez, I mean, <laughs> maybe two and a half hours in your brain, but it, that was like 10 hours a day for us. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, um, I probably did spend more time than two and a half hours a day because, yeah. because that was just the minimum that I, I was looking at. Right. But, um, so you had a plan to, now mind you, did dad suggest this to you because he's your dad and it's like saying, Hey, I'm going to teach, uh, you know, Tiger Woods, how to be the greatest golfer in the world. Or did you have some affinity for law? No. So my dad just came in my room one day and just asked me <laughs> if I wanted to be an attorney. And the reason I agreed, uh, I had two reasons cause I really wanted to help people and make yeah. a positive impact. And I thought becoming an attorney would really help me to do that in the way that I wanted to. And the way that I wanted to do that was uh, not dealing with like the medical things. I wasn't interested in that, but I was interested in the intellectual like challenge. Right. And I really liked puzzles uh, growing up. Uh, but but it, but it's almost like, it's funny because, and you know, I, I'm gonna have to refer to you every once in a while as you know, the, the, the young person in the room or whatever. Sorry, Marcella, by the way. <laughs> look at her face like thanks but all kids and you're an adult now you're 18 and you're you're jesus you're a, a deputy district attorney but all people at your age at 13 14 years old have these dreams of helping the world but they don't go out and execute what you do what you executed i mean did you look at dad and say well that's just crazy or did you say like everything that you may have done with your dad in life, yeah, that's a challenge I'm willing to take. So, of course, when I first heard it, I thought it was crazy. <laughs> okay, and good. I didn't. I didn't think I could. I, yeah, I didn't think I could do it either. I thought. Uh, I thought law school would be too hard. Um, but basically, what my dad told me was he'll be paying for the tuition and he'll be my support. So, he, and he told me like even if I find it too hard or if I wanted to give up, he'd be okay with that. And yeah. as long as I tried something and that like I tried this challenge and uh, he'd just be proud that I like make it, made an attempt. Wow. Okay. We're going to be right back with an amazing story by Peter Park, uh, who is now the youngest attorney, uh, youngest person to ever pass the bar and a deputy district attorney out in Tulare County. This is the Mark Capitan show. We'll be right back after this. 
It's KMJ at KMJnow.com or wherever you stream. Also, AM, FM, 105.9 and 580 on your AM dial. I I love saying that, but uh, all right, we'll, we'll leave it at that. It's, it's a passing fad, I think. Hey, uh, folks, listen, I'm going to pot this music down. Uh, Marcella, who do we call if we're in trouble or if we need an attorney? The Capitan Brothers. The Capitan Brothers, Marcella says. Of course, she knows that. She knows that because she works at the office, Peter. I don't know if you know that. She works at our office also, Peter. We are on with Peter Park. I like to think of him as the Spidey Man of Law. Peter Park... Uh, was uh, the youngest person. I'm going to skip over the Capitan ads because I have two district attorneys in front of me and everybody knows to go to the Capitan Brothers at 498-8000 if you are arrested or cited for a criminal offense. We are on with Peter Park, uh, who is the newest district attorney over there at the DA's office in Tulare County, along with um, the head honcho from the district attorney's office, Tim Ward. Uh, Peter was uh, the youngest person to ever pass the bar. Uh, hey, by the way, how studying for the bar, getting those bar results, they came around Thanksgiving, right? Yes. How how scary, uh, did, did it come before? See, it used to come the week of Thanksgiving, like the day before Thanksgiving, and it could just ruin a person's Thanksgiving. So, I mean, uh, did it come that close? And was it was it a the, bit better because it was about two weeks, three weeks before Thanksgiving. So you had a great Thanksgiving, right? Yes. Okay. Wait, so dad, let's recap the story a little bit. Dad puts you up to this and as a dare almost, right? It, was it because of this 21 year old kid who had passed the bar that dad said, uh, this is what we're going to do? Um, so my dad seeing this 21 year old passing the bar, he thought if he could do it, my son could do it. Okay. He also saw as he was researching, he also found the story of Abraham Lincoln, who became a lawyer uh, without even the even passing the bar. He just studied law at home, just reading that's books. That's right. And that's pretty much the path that I took, reading books at home. Uh, was, I mean, what's it like when you open up that mail? I'm assuming, was dad by your side or did you go in a room uh, by yourself? It was it was on the computer now. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hate to break it to you. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, when Tim and I, okay, yeah, we so, used to get a mail. And, chiseled yeah. stone. Well, it used to be that there was mail that you would get, and if you got the big package, that oh. was a bad sign, because that was your application to, to sign up again. If you got yeah. the small letter, then that was the good sign. Okay, so you- Yeah, so you, my entire family was just huddled around oh my laptop, my and oh. it, I, I was just refreshing the screen over and over again, uh, <laughs> until like the exact moment where they like update it for yeah. everybody. And I had my cameras rolling. My my family they they set up like a tripod to capture everybody's reaction. And uh, as soon as we reload it, there's a, there's a pause because we're trying to find where it says pass right or, yeah. or non pass. And then everybody starts celebrating. Oh my And we God. have it on video. It's actually, uh, we posted it on YouTube. Okay, we're going to do a link to that for the, by the way, uh, YouTube, I, I got to remember, YouTube, subscribe, like, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Instagram, Truth Social, all that stuff we're on. So we'll, we'll uh, do a link to your, uh, your, your video. Uh, I mean, and then that moment between you and dad of, I, I could do this, I could do anything basically, right? Yeah, um, yeah. He really instilled the confidence in me to do it. Is that where it comes from? Do, do, have you? Has the family always been like this? Our family has always been pretty unconventional uh, when it comes to things. Uh, my dad had a had a PhD in material science, and he had a job lined up in in Japan. We, we were originally from Korea, but he had a very nice, like, plush research position yeah. in Japan. But um, he decided to to throw that all away and come to America and, and do practice acupuncture. <laughs> and, really? Uh, yes. Uh, and he, he had to convince my, my mother to come to America uh, with, with almost no guarantee of a job or a steady flow of income. Um, so my dad likes to do things unconventionally and take risks. And um, I think that really uh, left an impact on me as well. It, it, Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, but a, a risk to, to go into acupuncture after having a, a high tech job like that, that he could have done. Wow. That's an, because it, it's not only a risk, but it's also an adventure that he's seeking in yes. some respect. Yeah. All right, Tim. So he comes to your office and you say, I, you know, cause I thought about this and I thought about how, how I want to ask these questions to you, Tim, is do you see th 
do you see him as a regular line deputy or do you understand that he has a potential special purpose being young and being able to put him in a position that may not only benefit you, but uh, benefit him and the rest of the community by his, by outreach or something to that effect. Yeah. I don't know that that was um, first and foremost in our, our decision-making process. We obviously saw um, a young man who was not only, you know, I'll say brilliant, smart at what he does, but very dedicated. Um, it, it appeared to us that he was singularly focused on becoming a prosecutor. And, and you know, um, in places like Tulare County, you can get a lot of experience. You can actually help vulnerable victims right away. Um, and then what we, um, what, what I guess I've kind of seen is I, I walk the hallways and I'm surprised at how young, um, our, um, you know, I don't want to say the clients, but your clients, you know, the the defendants that we charge get younger and younger every day. And we always talk about this concept of having prosecutors represent the the community. um, And and I fully agree with that. Uh, Our jurors are younger. Um, You know, he can relate to our jurors and our victims and our witnesses a lot better than I can. Right. Right. So uh, I think that was a an indirect benefit that none of us saw coming. Um, But we looked at just a laser focused dedication and what a commitment, you know? Right, right, right. I mean, have you had trials already? I've had one. You've had one jury trial in your, what, two months or so of practice? Yeah, two months. (laughs) That's actually pretty good, you know? Uh, What was the trial? It was a uh, drunk driving case uh, with a greater than 0.15 blood alcohol. Uh, Do I ask you, was it thumbs up, thumbs down? So he, he ran a stop sign and, and like we called an expert. The evidence was pretty clear and the the end result, well, before I get to the end result, <laughs> uh, we, we originally had this trial scheduled in January. Okay. But then uh, due to some mishap with our witnesses, um, they were talking outside in the hallway in, in presence of jurors. Right. And oh, the yeah. judge so did not like yeah. that. And it hurt. Yeah, it was, yeah. Not, it was right. not intentional. It was, yeah. it was yeah. by accident. Right. But yeah. the judge did not like that, and he declared a so mistrial. So mistrial, right. Yeah. And this was my first trial, and I was I was very bummed out by that. But oh, that's just got, a mistrial. But it, but it got continued to yeah. February, which is this month. And I was able to, and because of the continuance, actually, I yeah. was able to better prepare myself for this trial. Um, and the end result was a guilty on all counts. Uh, uh, nice. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, Very you. good. Yeah. What a good experience. I'll tell you, it's trial. a good experience. It's also a good experience to lose a trial. Okay. I know that's going to kill you when it happens yeah. because you're a driven guy, but to learn what the mistakes are, I'm not saying that I ever lost a trial, but. Oh, oh. <laughs> I've, I've never told you about my very first jury trial, which yeah. occurred in the old Porterville courthouse. Uh, it was a domestic violence case. The jury deliberated in a blink of an eye, came back with not guilty. And not only that, Marcus Zero walking out, they walked over and shook the defendant's hand. Oh my and gosh. I literally <laughs> thought, because Joe Dane and uh, Anthony Foltz were around, I literally thought, should I check? <laughs> choose another career oh, my here lord so, you know yeah. my 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 uh, listen i got i gotta say i have a pretty decent record as far as that's concerned one of my few if maybe one of the only losses that i had was a jury trial in tulare county in front of judge ferguson it was handed to me like a day before uh, by the partner of this firm that i was working for and uh I remember it was min- uh, it was a guy playing pool with a guy named Minnesota. Wait, who's the friend who was really driving the car later on who you're playing pool with? Uh, Minnesota uh, 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 Slim. I go, oh, Minnesota <laughs> Slim, like Minnesota Fats, right? Judge Ferguson, they came back in about 15 minutes. The, even the court reporter was on the jury. She's looking at me like, Capitan, really? And finally, uh, the Judge Ferguson came out and he sentenced to the guy and gave him like an extra five days because, quote unquote, it was the most ridiculous story he had ever heard. So <laughs> so I don't blame myself for that loss. Yeah. So, uh, All right, Peter. So you're, you're basically, you've had your first trial. You've been through law school. You've done a, you know, a little bit of proficiency in, in college and stuff. What's the one thing that you think as an 18 year old kid now, sorry about that adult that now you're a lawyer and you, whether it's constitutional law, whatever, what is the one thing that you sit there and you go, Hmm, I'm going to mature myself that much greater because I need to get a grasp on this. And I think maybe there's an, an issue with age that I may not quite understand. That was that was a pretty long question, but um, <laughs> yeah. uh, during law school, 
uh, I did find myself struggling with understanding what a mortgage was because I had no idea. So the first on my list was property. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But now I do know what a mortgage is. You do know what a mortgage yeah. is. Believe me, I didn't have my first mortgage until, mortgage until I was like 35 years old. So you're not, you're, you know, and my brother, John, I think uh, bought his first house at 40. So <laughs> don't worry, you're not, you're not alone in that but kind Mark, of stuff. Mark, don't you think uh, along the path, you uh, being, a, being a lawyer, uh, in criminal uh, law especially, you almost have to be an expert in all these areas. You know, uh, medicine, uh, forensic science, yeah, uh, DNA, uh, arson is a, a very technical. And so um, I'm excited for the path and the journey that lays you, ahead. You, yeah. you, you do, but, but I, I do want to talk about this concept. And Peter, you may have heard it about the big picture when we get right back after this with, with Peter Park and Tim Ward from the Tulare County District Attorney's Office. This is KMJ. It's News Talk 580-1059 KMJ. Welcome back to the Mark Capitan Show. Folks, uh, we would like to thank our new sponsor of the uh, Mark Capitan Show, Steno Keyboards. Steno Keyboards. If you are a stenographer out there and you need the latest advances in uh, keyboards for your job as a stenographer, contact Steno Keyboards at where, Peter? Uh, just go to our website, stenokeyboards.com. At stenokeyboards.com, stenokeyboards.com. <laughs> I'm going to pot this music down. This, it, folks, this is uh, the Mark Capitan Show. Uh, we are on with Peter Park. He is the youngest person to ever pass the California bar. He is a district attorney at the district attorney's office in uh, Tulare County. Uh, at the age of 18 years old, we are on with him and uh, his boss, the old man, uh, Tim Ward, head district attorney down there. And I asked Peter during one of the breaks, uh, what does he do uh, you know, in his spare time? And he says, oh, I have a business. And his business is Steno Keyboards, right? Yes, that's right. <laughs> and you make keyboards for stenographers. I, I designed it and I have a factory make it for me. He has a factory making the keyboards for him. How much are these keyboards, buddy? So, a little bit of background. Yeah. The, the keyboards that the court reporters use in court, yeah. um, they're thousands of dollars. The ones that I've seen in, in our courtrooms in Tulare County, they use uh, $5,000 machines. Yeah. So the average person can't really learn Steno because it's very expensive. So, But I wanted to learn Steno because it's a really fast way to type. Um, so... I figured out, so I, I wanted to buy a keyboard online that, that was like a Seno keyboard, but my dad suggested kind of offhandedly as a joke that I should make a keyboard. <laughs> dad keeps putting you yeah, up to these yeah, things. Yeah. So, <laughs> He's the troublemaker in the family. He really is. Um, and so I just Googled how to make keyboards and apparently there was a guide on how to do it. So I just followed that guide and um, I designed my, my keyboard and, and sent the design files to the factory. Um, so I got, I made myself a keyboard, Yeah. but I, now, now I realize that I could sell this yeah. to p- other people who are in a similar situation as me. Absolutely. Stenokeyboards.com. Yeah, so Stenokeyboards.com. Good it, for you. It is, it is much more affordable right now. It's, we what sell, are they going for? What are they selling for? Uh, right now, uh, it's around a hundred dollars. Our, our listen, 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 is, if the expensive ones are $5,000 yes. and you wanted to make a cheaper one, you could have made a thousand dollar one. <laughs> you didn't have to make yes, it a hundred dollars. Okay. One of the lessons in life that, uh, we'll get you to one of these days. Hey, what does mom do by the way? Uh, my mom makes Korean desserts. She's a, she, she uh, teaches how to make Korean desserts. All right. We're coming over to mom's house. The office has been the beneficiary of some of those. Yes. Uh, oh, really? We have treat oh, yes. Thursdays and my yes. mom makes, uh, treats for the oh, that's so that's so great. Uh, okay, speaking of what we were talking about, uh, and you know, life lessons. So, what's the hardest part you found about uh, out about the job? And, and and part of what I was going to discuss was uh, back in the day. We, we we call it the big picture. Can everybody see the big picture? Back in the day, um, domestic violence was basically a two day course. Now it's a full blown felony after OJ. Um, marijuana was 180 days now it's nothing all right mm-hmm. and so there's there's all these changes the three strikes was a big deal and now it's basically been obliterated what's the one thing that is the hardest for you to learn or hardest for you th- uh, to understand or, or what is the one thing like marijuana or something that 
you see it in a different way from maybe Tim and he's sitting right in front of you. But what is the one thing that you sit there and you go, gee, this should be changed uh, because I have a different outlook as being a younger guy than the rest of these people here. Well, at this point, I think I'm still learning how everything is working. Um, But one thing I found pretty interesting, not that I disagree with it, is uh, this system called diversion. Yeah. Where people can just get their case dismissed after doing uh, a couple of courses uh, after committing a crime. And, you know, I think there are good intentions behind the law, um, but I'm not sure. I'm still learning what the the outcome of, of, of that is. As far as whether there's going to be recidivism after taking yes. these courses. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I guess part of it, and you'll see when you start voting too and stuff like that, uh, is there, there's a definite difference between uh, a Republican and Democrat. There's a definite, a definite difference between the more liberal side of people and the more conservative side of people. And we all have somewhat of a heart that we want to give a person a second chance, but The question is, is retribution or rehabilitation the way to do it? Mm -hmm. And we've swung so far to rehabilitation and a lot of it has become somewhat of a scam to where they have these classes that people really don't attend or they don't pay attention to, they don't take to heart. And the biggest problem, Peter, that I noticed is Prop 47 and things like that. When they took away the penalty that you were facing, Mm -hmm. if you didn't take the class, then the lessons were never learned. And that's what's happening is we used to have a felony and you're facing literally 16 months or two years in prison if you don't do this thing. And our clients were scared to death and so they would do it. And the ones who didn't do it, well, they were gonna you know, continue to commit crimes anyway. Yeah. So repeal 47, right, Tim? Absolutely, we could do a whole show on that. And that's why I'm very active in the the initiative process. You know, last year as the president of the DA's association, we were uh, working on that with our stakeholders and the folks in the retail industry. And I think that's the best hope that we've got uh, to kind of not completely repeal Prop 47, but, you know, fix what's broken. And uh, well, see, have, yeah, yeah and, and I've seen there's been a movement now to do to make some changes to parts of 47. And my whole thing was, I, I didn't think it was broken to begin with as far as, uh, you know, the, the, the laws for drug addicts and stuff like that. We had diversion classes. Right, right. We had a judge who could say, hey, let, you know, let, let's let you enroll in a program. And I, I think yeah. every pretty much judge would do that. We had a great successful drug court program here right. uh, in Tulare County and here in Fresno as well. That's right. In fact, I remember because you guys were one of the first ones who did it too. And and our our population has all but dwindled and gone away. Yeah. Uh, the the drug rehabilitative pro- rehabilitative programs are, are almost non-existent. Well, and it's and it's palpable. And Peter, I don't know if you notice the difference, but uh, from uh, you, you as an eighteen-year-old guy are used to seeing homeless people out on the streets. We didn't. We never saw that. Oh, really. Yeah, if you saw that, it would be a rare guy down on down near the railroad tracks, down near the mission or something like that. But to see what you see right now all over the place is to me a direct result of Prop 47. And that's exactly what I think you've noticed is that you say, we have these, for lack of a better word, BS classes that these people are doing and they're doing a couple days worth of, or a couple of weeks worth of classes and they're getting out of these crimes that literally there's no real benefit to them because they have no incentive to quit. And so. I don't think there's much continuity uh, on who gets diversion exactly. It's, you know, very independent yeah. um, based on uh, what courtroom you're in and what yeah. day of the week. Let me ask you this, young kid, marijuana, what's it, what's it to, to you? I'm not saying whether you used it or anything like that. I don't want to ask you that. Well, the I never out, used marijuana. No, but you know what? I'll tell you what. I didn't. And I t- tried it once when I was forty-seven years old, and once when I was fifty-two, and that was it. All right. Uh, so I'm in the same boat as you, buddy. And it's a long story about going to a Kiss concert and my buddy next to me asking me if I wanted <laughs> to have a hit. <laughs> my brother saying, "Hell no, he's not going to do that." But anyway, uh, okay. So, so to you, marijuana is a. a a gateway drug it's a big deal it's not a big deal it's uh, no matter what your personal choice is as far as you being a prosecutor how do you look at that i think as a prosecutor i would just agree or side with what the law is currently but personally i 
disagree with usage of marijuana because it affects it is a drug it's like, mm -hmm. people say it's a gateway drug into worse drugs but i think it is a drug because it affects your ability to to think and process information yeah 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 you sort of have an old soul as far as that's concerned i get it all right, we're going to be right back after this. This is the Mark Capitan Show on KMJ. We are on with Peter Park, who is the youngest person to ever pass the California bar and one of the newest district attorneys at the district attorney's office in Tulare County and Tim Ward, his boss, <laughs> the boss. We'll be right back after this on the Mark Capitan Show. This is KMJ. Welcome back to KMJ and the Mark Capitan Show. You can check it all out at KMJ.com or wherever you stream. Uh, we also have the podcast of today's show. It's going to be on YouTube, uh, Facebook, uh, True Social and Rumble and all that. Right, Marcella? Yeah, this is the Mark Capitan Show with uh, me, Attorney Mark Capitan, your host. So, hey, folks, welcome back. Uh, we are on with Peter Park. He is uh, the youngest person to ever past the California Bar Association for now, and we were talking uh, with uh, Peter and his boss, the head district attorney over at Tulare County, Tim Ward, about who's going to play each other in the movies, uh, and Tim Ward says that he wants Sam Rockwell to play him, right? And what's your wife think about that one? Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm not going to hear the end of that. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. We had a better suggestion uh, from the peanut gallery over there, but we won't say what the better suggestion was. Um, and the reason why we're talking about the, this as, as a movie is here's the next step of the whole Park family um, adventure, let's put it that way, is Peter, you are the youngest to ever have passed the California bar, but tell us why it may not be for long. Yes, uh, I have two sisters going to law school currently. <laughs> They're both younger than me. One is, uh, she recently just turned 17, and the other is 13. Uh, the 17 year old, she, her name's Sophia. Um, she is currently in her last year of law school and will take the July 2024 bar exam. Oh my God. And because of this, she'll beat my record by a few months. By a few months. Yes, and then, and then my 13 year old sister, her name is Sarah, she'll beat Sophia's record by a few months when she takes the bar. So is, is, Sophia, so is the youngest one in, uh, what's her name, the youngest one? Sarah. Sarah, is she in law school right now? She's too? in her first year of law school. Of, at 13 at years 13. old? Yes. She graduated high school before uh, graduating elementary. Okay, let me ask you now, because, <laughs> wait a minute, should you say that again? Uh, Sarah graduated high school before graduating elementary school. Okay, uh, wait a minute now. Yeah, bona fide geniuses in the family, right? I and I, I mean that seriously. I, I would say it's it's uh, most of the credit is due to my dad. He he is really oh. the genius who, who <laughs> figured out a way to turn kids into. Yeah, you're smart in you're kids. in trouble with your mom right now. You understand that? Our mom fed us, so <laughs> our, our mom fed you. Our yeah. brain and our body is made up from her food. Oh, that's beautiful. That's, that's it. You know what? Right now. Oh, she is, well, you would know better because you, you, you also What's hired. Sophia well, doing now? She's a law clerk here uh, at the Tulare County District Of course, going to have the whole park family there. <laughs> Mom's cooking the food. Dad's uh, feeding the employment line over there. Okay, so you have now your sisters that are going to probably beat you. Is I, Tell me how competitive the family is. Is that going to crush you or is that going to be one of these things where you say, that's great, I'm going to no, pass? No, that that's great. I don't think we're very competitive between uh, siblings. I, th I think uh, uh, me and my sisters, we have a great relationship. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, it's great for them to, to break my record and it'll be just a chain of yeah. record breaking. You know, that, that's, a, that's a credit to your mom and dad right there. I got to say that. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, tell me about the Rubik's Cube. What's this all about? Oh, uh, I first was introduced to this thing called the Rubik's Cube in third grade. And I just thought it was so cool. I asked my dad to teach me how to do it. But my, my dad didn't know how to solve a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> so he just he just got me a Rubik's Cube and printed out a guide he found on the internet. And I just spent my entire third to fourth summer break just figuring out how to do it. Right. And I, I was super engrossed in it during my elementary school and even part of my middle school. And that is pretty much all I did after school. I just practiced Rubik's Cubes. Yeah. And I got to the point where I could solve a Rubik's Cube. So right now, my best time solving a Rubik's Cube is eight seconds. Eight seconds? Yes. Oh, I didn't even know that was possible. I, I Okay, I picked it up in high school. They came out right around the time I was in high school. So that would have been, what, uh, 
Um, I graduated eighty eighty two, about forty years before you were born. Okay, <laughs> actually forty years before you were born. Um, and uh, I, I picked it up. I tried it out a couple times. I'm like, well, I just don't have the time for this, or I just don't have the you know the mind for it, or whatever it is. And it brings me sort of to what you know I had thought about. My aunt Virginia back in the day, we used to call her Aunt Bird. She was a teacher. She went to college. And I remember sitting talking to her. Uh, she went to Fresno State, uh, and she said, "I took every course that I could possibly take that I could handle, so that I could graduate in three years." And then she became an, a teacher for about forty, forty-five years. And she looked at me and she goes, "I didn't know why. I, I don't know why I was in a rush." Do you ever have that sense where? I, I mean, it's it's also recent for you. You may not have time for the reflection, but at some point, do you ever have that sense of wait a minute? I should be playing baseball with my friends. I should be out there, you know, uh, going on vacations to to Disneyland or or wherever the beach with you know. I should be out dating. I should be out doing this kind of stuff. I'm not saying that you don't do that, but when, uh, but is there a sense at all that am I doing all these things? And they may be completely fun to me, but am I? Is there something that I'm missing? Um, I get the, those kind of comments a lot. Uh, people concerned that because I I did this so fast and I, I was engrossed in law school that I wasn't able to uh, have fun and enjoy life. Uh, but I don't think that's necessarily true. I, I did have fun and I I am having fun, um, just in a slightly different way, I guess. Um, and about like taking life slowly. Uh, I, I will definitely take that into consideration. <laughs> from the, the, the yeah. advice from a wise old man is what he's trying to tell me. <laughs> no, you know, I, I see it in talking to you that all these challenges, including having a business and making a keyboard, doing the Rubik's Cube, uh, law school, all that, it, it seems like that is fun for you. It is, yeah. Is there ever a time where you just veg out on YouTube or, or a TV show or something like that? I mean, it, yeah. it's part of it. Can you relax is what I'm saying. Is there I, a point to where you can I relax? I have a problem watching too much YouTube. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to watch less YouTube. So, and uh, like Instagram reels and shorts and yeah. But so yeah. It, do you allow, and in that sense, do you allow yourself to be a teenager? I guess that that is you being a teenager yeah. and you could separate your addiction to YouTube uh, compared to, and, and go to do your job and do it fully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hard worker, Tim? Absolutely. Yes. Wow, really? You take your work home at night? I try not to. That's good. Yeah. I try to manage my time. In law school, they had something called the bar review. And uh, it, what it was, was on the chalkboard it, uh, in, in McGeorge, they would write bar review and then they would have a name. And the name was the name of a bar where every oh. Thursday night they said, we are going to force ourselves to go out and do these things because law school was so traumatic and stressful and all that kind of stuff that you have to force yourself and so if you want advice from the old man is you got to force yourself every once in a while not to go to a bar. <laughs> don't, don't, do that yeah, 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 all yeah, King and Jay's going to get on me. Yet. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, but to, to, to learn how to force yourself to have fun because mm -hmm. the job will get to you, buddy. Yeah. And uh, yeah. One of the things that we look at is obviously anything that we ask Peter to do, you know, he's going to do, but you don't have to do it alone. You know, there's an office there to yeah. help as well. Yeah, yeah. And take advice from Tim. Like I said, like I told you before, I will say it publicly on the air. Tim Ward was probably my favorite guy at the district attorney's office in Tulare County when I had my office down there. So take, uh, you know, follow his lead. A great, great mentor for you. Okay, Peter? Yes. Peter Park and Tim Ward from the Tulare County District Attorney's Office. It's great having you guys on the show. Thank you hey, for thank you. Us. Thank you to Marcella Solorio-Taylor, my producer, for all her hard work and uh, for being by my side all these years. Thank you very much, Marcella, and to her wonderful husband for allowing her to work with me over here. This has been the Mark Capitan Show on KMJ. We'll see you next week.